Hello, welcome once again to our favorite TV station, Top Notch TV, the ocean of knowledge. In our biology series today, we want to focus and simplify our understanding of the mammalian skeleton. You see, whenever we talk of uh, the skeleton of something, the skeleton of your essay, be it in uh, English, be it in uh, composition, we refer to as the basic framework. And therefore, when you talk of our skeleton, we mean the basic framework of our body, the framework to which our body muscles are attached. We can divide our skeleton into two categories. We have the exoskeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The skull that forms our head, the skull, is the first part of the axioskeleton. Alongside that, we have the vertebral column. The vertebral column is what we casually refer to as the backbone, the bones that start right from below our skull, starting from the neck region up to the sacral region, or rather what we casually can talk of the tailbone. The tailbone or the coccygeal marks the end of the vertebral column. Besides the skull and the vertebral column, the third component of our exoskeleton is the ribcage alongside the sternum, the ribcage and the sternum. The skull basically protects the brain and the sense organs like the eyes and your ears. The vertebral column, on the other hand, offers protection to the spinal cord. Besides providing service for attachment of muscles, mm -hmm. our vertebral column offers protection to the spinal cord and the spinal cord is part of our central nervous system that is more like an elongation of the brain. The ribcage and the sternum is what we casually see as the chest area and it is a protective area. It offers protection to the lungs, which are our organs for gaseous exchange. And in our breathing system, the ribcage and the sternum alongside the intercostal muscles are the ones responsible for the process of breathing in and out. Having seen the composition of the exoskeleton, what about the appendicular skeleton? We also have the bones that are more like attachment onto the main body. And that is what we call the appendicular attachment. Therefore, the bones that form our limbs, the forelimbs, the hind limbs, those two categories are the main parts of our appendicular skeleton. Now, the forelimbs are attached to our exoskeleton by bones that are, especially in the shoulder region, that we'll call the pectoral girdle. The pectoral girdle. The main bone that is very visible, that is part of the pectoral girdle, is what we call the scapula. That forms the pectoral girdle. Likewise, our hind limbs, the legs, are attached to our exoskeleton, the main part of our body, at the region of the pelvis, by specialized bones that form the pelvic girdle. And therefore, the appendicular skeleton is comprising of the forelimbs and the hind limbs alongside the pectoral girdles and the pelvic girdles. That forms the appendicular skeleton. 
One more aspect that we want to understand when we talk of the mammalian, mammalian skeleton as an introduction is the types of views. The types of views. Now, we can describe four types of views mainly. As I am looking at you as my audience, you are seeing my face. If possible, you will see my stomach, the abdominal region, the chest. That is one type of view. And that is the ventral view. Ventral view. Ventral view. To mean the face or abdominal side. Ventral view. On the other way, once I turn 180 degrees, you look at my back. That gives us the dorsal view. So the dorsal view is simply the back side. The dorsal view is the back side. If we take a quadrupedal mammal like your favorite cow at home, the ventral view will be more like from the lower side, whereas the dorsal view will be more like from the side above, facing up, because it's quadrupedal. But for our case, bipedal mammals, the ventral view is that face side where you are walking, the was to. You are looking at somebody who is walking towards you. You are, you are seeing that person from, you are seeing that person, his or her ventral position. So you are giving that person ventral view. But when somebody is ahead of you, you are looking at that person walking in front of you. That is dorsal view. The other views, one, are anterior and posterior view. The anterior view means from the head side. The posterior view means from the tail side. That looks a bit easy for quadrupedal mammals like uh, Wakao here. But even with us, we have, we can describe anterior view and posterior view because <clears throat> If I take my chest area, my chest area, on top of my chest, there is the neck. And just below the chest, there is the abdomen. Okay? So, with reference to the chest, my neck is towards the head. So, my neck is on the anterior side of the chest. Whereas, the abdomen and the stomach, which is below the chest, is on the posterior side of the chest. That is posterior view. Therefore, even with us, posterior view means from the tail side, while the anterior view means from the head side. In most cases, it will be so significant when you describe those views with respect to a specific position or a specific structure, which we are going to see in the next session. Hopefully, that forms a clear introduction of the description of our mammalian skeleton. Watch out in the next session, starting with the exoskeleton, where we describe then which bones form the exoskeleton, the structure and the adaptations, and what are the unique features for each vertebrae. Until then, bye, and remember to subscribe to our favorite online platform, the Top Notch TV. See you.